picked up the Chicago Electric 125 and I'm telling you right now, don't bother taking the face shield out of the box. Pick up an auto darkening helmet and you'll thank me later. To go along with that, you can pretty much put the rest of this in the box as well. If you're brand new to welding, do pull out the quick setup guide. It will come in handy for you a little later. You will need some flux core or inner shield wire. I always go with 0 .030 or 30 thousandths of an inch. It just has a good range of thickness of material it can do. Feeding the wire is pretty simple, and hey, they've even got a little picture book for us. The number one tip is to not let go of the wire until it is fed through the sheathing and the tensioner is in place. We can now take off this nozzle and throw it away. I'm not kidding. Check out the video in the description for more on that. Take off the contact tip, turn the machine on, turn the wire speed up, and pull that trigger. Contact tip back on. Yeah, that took like two minutes and we're ready to weld. So the machine's settings are based off the thickness of material you're doing. So I've got some eighth inch tubing here. Pretty much gonna be almost maxing this machine out. I gotta turn it to the max and then a wire speed of about eight. To prevent nuisance circuit breaker tripping. Now you can still run on a 15 amp breaker, just not up at the highest settings. So if you don't want it to be tripping on you, I would probably keep it at a minimum and maybe less than six. Close your eyes, pull the trigger, and start practicing. I don't know, unless you really like grinding and cutting a lot, I always do uh, some practice pieces on the same thickness and shape of the material I'm going to be doing. I get asked all the time, hey, I've got a brand new welder and I pull the trigger and nothing. The first thing to always check is the ground clamp. Yes, you'll want to make sure that you're either connected directly to your workpiece or to a metal table if you are welding on one. Don't be trying to go through a whole bunch of rust or mill scale. Now, if the wire is not even coming out, check the tension and the rollers that those are set and that it's on. And if you're not even hearing the motor spin at all in there, you probably got a lemon, so take it back and get a new one. Those welds didn't turn out too bad, so let's move on to the frame. I'm doing it, yes, an extremely overbuilt, overweight shop stool. Stay tuned for the full video on that one. Switching over to the fillet weld on a flat coupon. This is one of the biggest reasons why to get rid of that MIG nozzle. It just gets in the way. Take it off and you'll be able to see what you're actually welding. Side note, the titanium flux core nozzle does fit on the Chicago Electric 125. No, this isn't gonna be a comparison, but a while ago I told you to skip the Chicago Electric and go with the 125. That's mostly because the cheapest you'd ever see this for is 120 or 110. And well, you know, Harbor Freight did some good market research and figured out it wasn't selling like they liked to. So they've now dropped it down to, you'll see it for 99 bucks. And man, I'll tell you what, it is the right of the perfect spot because even me, not necessarily even needing another welder, I've got plenty of them, went out and picked up another one. Yes, you're dealing with the 90 day warranty, but you get that with any other one and the limited settings, but for 99 bucks, yes, it's a great deal. It will get all of your odds and ends done. Pick it up. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna get rid of my Titanium 125. I'm not, I'm not that crazy. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.